uh, around the world. Before we begin, I would just like to acknowledge that tonight I'm uh, giving this uh, workshop from the lands of the Boyne Wurrung and the Woi Wurrung of the Kulin Nation in the west of Melbourne and to acknowledge the ancestors, elders and community members who have been the traditional custodians and current custodians of the land. We're very fortunate to uh, have the wealth of tradition around ethical conduct, uh, around looking after place, looking after people uh, and looking after planet that we have a lot of learning that's come from our Indigenous peoples here in Australia. I'm aware that many of you will be in different places around the world and uh, acknowledge the Indigenous peoples, First Nations peoples of your places. Um, and also to welcome my colleagues who are in many countries around the world. And we were insistent tonight that we would all try and come together to have this conversation about ethics with you, uh, rather than just having me present it. So we have um, somebody in the UK, in Chile, in Malawi, in Nigeria, and in Italy. And hopefully that will uh, help give a bit of a diverse flavour to the conversation that we'll, we'll have this evening. So, uh, what is it that uh, brings us to this issue of ethical challenges? It's questions like when we're working with um, communities that are unfamiliar to us, how do we know whether we will do harm or add value to the community that we're working with? When we're working with people from different cultures and contexts, how do we know what's the strongest path to walk? How do we know if the decisions that we're taking are right or wrong for that place, for those people and for that time? Um, when we're working with a community uh, who ha perhaps has uh, low resource, is it an ethical thing to pay for people to participate so that they can have time away from their other responsibilities or duties? Or will that in fact introduce an ethical dilemma in terms of the likely information uh, and exchange that might go on in the context of that research? These are the sorts of questions uh, that really prompted our thinking and drew us together to uh, develop this toolkit that we'll be talking with you about this evening. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Dr. Clara Kalia, who's sitting in Italy, but is uh, usually based at the University of Edinburgh and who has been with me since the beginning of, of this project. Uh, at that time, we were both at the University of Edinburgh. I was with the Global Health Academy and Clara was with the Global Academy for Food Security and Agriculture. And our work together was, was in Malawi. Over to you, Clara. Thank you, Corinne. Uh, thank you all for joining us today uh, for this conversation about ethical challenges in global context. Uh, today we are here to, to share with you, Corinne, please, next slide. Um, thank you. Uh, so today we are here to share with you uh, an ethics toolkit to help us think through some of uh, the many complex ethical challenges that we face uh, as a researchers working in complex and fragile contexts around the world. Uh, we also discuss how our university and organization can help us to create an environment and culture that support ethical practice. Uh, here you can find even the link for the website of the toolkit that uh, we uh, developed that we are going to describe uh, uh, in this presentation. Next slide, please. So this has been a, a collaborative effort uh, from researchers all, from all around the world, uh, because this cannot be a unidimensional uni uh, conversation. One needs to be, uh, have many voices involved and to consider the richness, the diversity of the needs of, of uh, different experience. So, so far, more or less 200 global researchers participated to the conversation, and uh, these are the ones uh, highlighted in this map in the uh, dark blue. And as you can see, even uh, different university and institutions uh, contributed to the conversation. Next slide. So we uh, have representation from across uh, uh, our di disciplinary and uh, professional area. Uh, and as you can see, uh, more or less over 60 disciplines participated to the conversation. 
because we believe that this needs to be a collaborative effort uh, and uh, uh, developing uh, common language is important when we talk about ethical uh, dilemmas and uh, solutions. So the toolkit that we are going to present today um, represent uh, the uh, different perspective and a multidisciplinary approach. We all know that when we work in a global context, uh, we work most of the time in uh, uh, multidisciplinary projects. And uh, uh, so it's, it's really important that we represent this uh, multidisciplinary approach, even in the toolkit. So it doesn't represent only one area of uh, expertise and professions. So uh, next slide. So over the last year and a half, as Corinne was mentioning today, uh, we work on the development of the toolkit that has been, uh, in a way, uh, a journey for us. And everything started, it all started by involving people. Uh, one year and a half ago, we uh, organized five uh, uh, workshops at the University of Edinburgh, and we were amazed by the number of, of uh, researchers working in global context interested to participate in the discussion, uh, talking about ethical dilemmas and uh, uh, challenges that we all face. Uh, we identify so many differences, um, but also uh, many uh, similarities. In parallel, we also run, uh, we also did a, a scoping review from the literature identifying um, 60 found, uh, 65 uh, uh, papers and uh, uh, this uh, gave us uh, the strength of the uh, theoretical uh, background that has been then representing the toolkit. At the same time, we also uh, review the current uh, world, uh, world view value system and policies in ethics uh, uh, regulations. And uh, we identify a variety of, of key ethical principles. And uh, uh, together, uh, we summarize what emerged from the conversation with people, from the literature, and uh, from the principle, and uh, we uh, draft the first version of the toolkit, uh, which uh, will be described uh, will be described later by Corinne. <clears throat> As you can see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey to summarize the key point of, of, from these different aspects. Uh, this first draft, uh, we after the design of the first draft, we come back to the people that initially were uh, participated to the discussion. And we run uh, 16 uh, uh, expert feedback sessions around the world, more or less uh, one year ago. So participants of the, of the first workshop became then host of the discussion in their own institution involving the further uh, researcher uh, uh, to provide us feedback to the first version of the toolkit. Uh, then after the, the, the revision of the first version, we create uh, uh, the, the, the toolkit, which is now available in the website, this is uh, the link, and uh, which is also uh, summarized in a pocket version now translated in, in uh, 11 languages. And now off back to Corinne. Thanks, Clara. Yes, indeed, it has been quite a journey. And for us, I think the key messages that have come out of those conversations with uh, the more than 200 researchers have been quite powerful in driving us on to, um, to share that uh, collective knowledge with others. Uh, one of the key messages that came from each of those roundtable conversations was a feeling of not being alone anymore, that researchers have been facing these challenges by themselves and wondering whether uh, their struggles were just a reflection of perhaps a, a lack of experience on their part or a lack of skills. And yet when people came together, we would hear the same stories and the same messages over and over again. I think perhaps most importantly, what came out of those conversation was an understanding that uh, ethics is not about a set of rules. It's not about uh, following uh, a set of demands or, or guidelines. It's really about having an ethical worldview, having a really clear set of values that can guide your decision-making when perhaps you're in a context where your usual rules don't fit or the circumstance is unique. It was very clear in these conversations that although most universities think uh, uh, of ethics as a, a point in time when you 
uh, submit your ethics proposal to an ethics committee for approval and then you move on to your research. Rather than that, what we found was that researchers identified ethical dilemmas and challenges that they faced from well before the ethics committee had an opportunity to look at their application and lasted well after their approval had been in place, all the way from the very beginning to the end of their research journey. So it was not simply a paperwork hurdle. Uh, being ethical, taking an ethical approach really requires that we have an ethical mindset all the way from beginning to end and beyond and a commitment to good practice, uh, both our own good practice and the good practice of those that we're working with. Moreover, our uh, groups from all countries identified that there were not one or two ethical dilemmas or challenges, but dozens and dozens of them. In fact, in every roundtable discussion that we had, we got people to put up uh, sticky notes on the walls around uh, the room that we were holding uh, the, the sessions in. And inevitably, the walls would get filled up, that there would be so many ethical challenges that people could identify all the way throughout their, their research experience. It also became clear to us that there were four consistent themes that kept coming up, and we'll talk about them a little bit later on, that helped people to understand uh, the ethical challenges that they were facing. Understanding the place in which it was occurring or the context, the people who were involved or affected, the principles that were driving the decision making um, and the precedents for what happened, what usually happened in that place or what had happened in the past. Another key message was from all participants is that it's not enough to simply uh, acknowledge ethical dilemmas uh, or think uh, through why the, these challenges are difficult to face. We must take ethical action. It must flow through to the choices we make and the actions that we take. We must be committed to seeing through those ethical uh, values to their ultimate conclusion. And one important way of supporting one another to take ethical action and to understand ethical challenges is to share case studies and share solutions. As researchers, we can sometimes work in a bit of a solo universe just within our own team. And there was a really strong uh, will and commitment from each of the research conversations that we had that we really need to join up as a global academic village to support one another in supporting the communities that we work with to ensure that we share um, our challenges and our solutions. And that there is inspiration and wisdom to be found in all of the different places that, uh, that we work and that we do our research. It's not simply that one place or one country or one uh, political system or one way of thinking has all of the answers. Quite the opposite, uh, that inspiration and wisdom comes in many forms in many places. And that context matters. What might be the right solution to an ethical dilemma in one place? may not be the right solution in another. And that there will be more than one solution. Moreover, that there may be no perfect solution. We may be choosing between really complex and challenging options, each of which has an element that works and an element that doesn't. I'm going to uh, hand over now to Action Amos, who is our colleague in Malawi. And he will talk us through the, the research journey that has come out of these conversations with researchers. Over to you, Action. Uh, thank you, uh, Corinne. So just like any other journey that uh, one would uh, embark on, uh, there are certain considerations that one has to uh, take uh, into consideration. It might be at the start of that journey uh, and even think about the end of that journey. But uh, as you think about that journey, you do not uh, only think about uh, the start and the end. You also think about uh, other things in between uh, your starting point to your end point. So as uh, Corinne uh, mentioned, that uh, we brought uh, in a lot of uh, research experts, over 200, uh, to have uh, discussions around uh, what matters uh, along this uh, journey. It was like uh, bringing in, uh, you know, pilots that have traveled uh, this uh, uh, certain rules, different rules to talk about uh, the challenges and issues that, uh, that they would uh, face and how uh, their gains can be improved. So key things that came out uh, that needs uh, consideration as you start, as you move, as well as you end with four uh, 
uh, piece that will later on uh, be explained better. Uh, issues to do with the place, uh, issues to do with the, the people, be it the participants, uh, the communities, the researchers uh, uh, themselves. Uh, secondly, the, the principles, the principles which we can line, uh, liken them to, to you know, uh, to, to guides that you would uh, need to keep on remembering uh, all along your uh, journey. And also precedents. As we have said, we have brought in a lot of uh, researchers together. So uh, there's a lot of precedents on the work that has been done. What can we learn and uh, what can be improved along uh, uh, the, the journey? So the journey uh, does not uh, start maybe when you're submitting your uh, ethical ap application for approval. But it's when the, the ideas are seeded. That's when we say we need to be thinking about uh, the ethics. We need to think about the people we'll be working with, uh, those that will be beneficiaries, those that will be researchers. What are the ethical implications uh, that we have to think along with the idea that we are putting on the, on the table? Usually we do not uh, think about uh, ethics as we start uh, putting up ideas, but uh, from what we learned and um, what we're working on now is to ensure that uh, we improve, uh, especially on that uh, area. When we are putting up uh, our teams, so we usually think about uh, the ethics around uh, uh, the teams that we'll be working with. It's not only the principal investigators, not uh, the core, uh, investigators, it might be the research assistants, it might be uh, anyone that will be part of that uh, team. How about the diversity to reflect uh, the research that we will be doing? Do we think about uh, that? At times we might uh, even look at uh, issues like uh, participatory uh, engagements with those that are even the, the beneficiaries of our uh, research. So all those things we are thinking with an ethical lens to ensure that the team that even that has been developed ethically it's uh, sound you took we talk also about uh, another note which is the partnership uh, development do we take into consideration uh, ethical consideration so to say about uh, who is going to be part of the work that we are doing usually we don't we think about uh, uh, the outcome, the outputs, and say, okay, we're going to produce a paper. So for this paper to be, uh, then we just identify those that are maybe uh, within the proximity and uh, who are able uh, you know, to, to work with us at that given time. But there is need to ethically think about uh, those uh, partnerships, which means that not all partnerships are, are partnerships. Ethics have to be considered on who we, uh, are going to work with and who are going to contribute and add value to the work that we will be doing. Now comes another node, which is the proposal uh, and grant development, and, uh, getting the, the funds. Again, we need to keep on going back. You remember the four Ps we talked about. Are they still being reflected in the uh, submissions we are going to make, the grants that are they talking to? Yes, in which areas can we improve, can we enhance our application as we submit it? Then comes now the ethics application itself, we now submit it. We're just not submitting to meet the requirements of a, an ethics committee. Just say, okay, these are their four, five, seven requirements that they need and those are the ones, but we still need uh, to be professional enough to even add more to ensure that uh, we strengthen uh, issues to do with ethics in research. Now the data collection begins again. We need go, to go back. So as we had already mentioned, when we likened this even to a literal journey, yes, you are now in the middle of your journey. You think about where you have come from. At times you even think about, well, when I was leaving my house, did I, did I lock all the doors? Did I lock the gate? The same applies with this journey again. We are moving along that journey. We go back and say, okay, we submitted that application. We are doing the data collection. When we're putting up the idea first, what ethical things did we say, issues that we say we're going to consider? We re review, revise, and even improve at that further um, stage, despite that we had already submitted or it has already been approved. This shows the professionalism and also the considerations that we 
have. And as we now develop uh, the tools and everything, we get to data analysis, still the same ethical lens. We are writing up now, we have done the analysis, and now we have our themes and ever we are now putting the paper, we still need to go back and think about uh, you know, our other nodes or other stops where we stopped and thought about it and ensure that still we are being inclusive in terms of uh, uh, the ethics or we still have that uh, ethical lens. Then comes um, knowledge uh, exchange and dissemination. Here comes now a challenge we have uh, done our write-up, but we usually forget. Uh, that's where now the issue to do with sustainability of uh, research starts from. We're talking about the knowledge exchange. Who do we need to exchange knowledge with? Are we going to share this uh, information with policymakers? Are we going to share this information with the participants? Uh, were we, um, how genuine were we involving the participants? What's their benefit in terms of uh, knowledge? Are we just leaving them as they are and just present our papers wherever we present them? But we need to think about uh, the knowledge exchange. We have gained knowledge. We are going to sh uh, share knowledge with the uh, scientific world, but also even with our participants. Translation into practice. Again, the uptake of our research. How ethical is it? We can produce as many papers as we can, but how many of those papers have now been translated into action, into policies, or how many, much of it has been, uh, the, the uptake, how much has it been? So all that uh, needs uh, to be considered. And lastly, it's uh, the legacy, the impact. You know, we need to end our journey with all the responsibilities. Do, do we, uh, what consequences? We need to take responsibility of the good things that has happened within the research, as well as uh, take responsibility of even the things that did not work. By doing so, we would have shown throughout the journey that we were ethically sound. We did not at one point remove our F ethical classes as we we're doing this way. So it's very important that we consider this journey. And that's why we intend to continue improving uh, this uh, research uh, journey as a team, as well as with others that will be uh, joining us as, uh, in this way. So back to you, Corinne. Thank you, Action. And I'm going to hand over now to Dr. Toby Ashodi, who is joining us from Nigeria this evening, or this morning, I think your time, Toby. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's morning, actually. Um, yes. Thank you, Corinne. Well, uh, Action just talked about the research journey, as well as Corinne talking about that same journey. And in the presentation, one recurring issue is the four Ps. So what is the four Ps? The four Ps is simply an opportunity, you know, it offers us as researchers, not only to embed ethics along the journey, but also to engage the ethical dilemmas and find solutions to those problems. As researchers global, working on global challenges, we research in a particular place. And place for us in the toolkit encompasses not only the location, but the context of that place, the local culture, the language, the political economic con context, the humanitarian situation. If you're working in a refugee, if you're working among refugees, how do you reflect that reality in your research? How do you? Then of course, it also talks about the people and people for us, is also multidisciplinary, it's also multidimensional. It goes beyond the researcher to include the participants, the communities, as well as the partners, the funding agencies, and even the government. So funding, I mean, people is not only about the individual researcher, it goes beyond those as researchers. Then of course the principles, we've been hearing about the principles. Of course, the principles are those values. Of course, expected methodological rigor, how fit is our, 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 put, our, our methods. Then of course, about transparency and accountability. We need to show what we've done openly, honestly to you know, our audience, because as researchers, we have audience probably in terms of at the end, you know, the end product of our research that uh, Action talked about. 
Then precedence. Precedence is the fact that what we are doing today or tomorrow is not new. Other researchers before us did something like that. What was their ethical protocol like? What challenges did they face? How can we make our own research better than the ones we met? Then of course, presidents is not only about the literature, also the traditional ways of knowing things. And we call the sans people in 2017 reminded us about these traditional ways of doing things. That it is not only the researchers that understands ethic, even ethics, even uh, the participants also have an understanding of what ethics are. So it is not only, presidents is not only about the literature, understanding what previous researchers did, the methods they followed, but also traditional ways of knowing things. And traditional also encompasses the communities that we are looking at. And of course, future proofing. After our research, what are we leaving for the next generation of researchers to learn from? We should share what we've learned so that others can actually improve on it. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Karen. Karen. Thank you, Toby, fantastic. And that'll come in very handy for our discussion in a little while. So I think it's really important that um, we take some time in this session today to put the toolkit into action and see if we can work through some of the ethical dilemmas that, uh, that our researchers and others have talked with us about uh, to see how this way of thinking, this toolkit and some of the, the approaches that we've just discussed can be of, of use to us. I guess the putting, putting the different elements together, the research journey and the four Ps provides us with a framework to walk through any particular case that we might come across, any particular situation or circumstance that we might find ourselves in where the answers are not obvious and where perhaps um, we're struggling to find uh, it within our own experience or skill set to know what to do. It helps us to, to lead through a process that you can see here in this slide where we start on the left hand side describing the ethical issue that, uh, that is confronting us to really uh, try to uh, make it real and tangible by putting it into words. And then to think about what part or parts of the research journey are most affected by this particular ethical issue. Where does the challenge um, uh, hit its most powerful point? It's unlikely that it will just be at one of these stages. Very often it's at several of the stages. And so the second column here is to encourage people to um, walk through and really think as um, Action was saying when he walked through the research journey, to think carefully and iteratively, even if you didn't imagine that that if, if ethical issue uh, might have influenced, for example, uh, the development of your team, later down the track, you may come to the view that in fact, it did influence the development of your team. Um, that perhaps when you wrote your ethics application, it seemed that this wasn't an ethical issue to you, but by the time you get to um, data collection, it's clear that it is an ethical issue. So really trying to think systematically through which parts of the research journey are most affected. And then the first, I guess, port of call then is to use the 4P approach to do some analysis to understand the dilemma best before we try and find a solution to really have a rich, deep understanding of what the, the challenge is. And thinking through place, people, principles and precedents in the context of that dilemma can really help us to ask ourselves questions that perhaps haven't been immediately obvious. And, and I should say, not just ask ourselves, often these, um, it's really important to have these conversations with others and between you, amongst your team, you may draw out different elements that you perhaps didn't see, but somebody else could see. And that the sum total of your experience and your uh, perceptions will often provide a much stronger foundation to think about ethical issues. And so once we understand the dilemma, once we've really dug a bit deep into that, laid out a, a rich landscape, we then need to reflect again using the four Ps and then move on to think about uh, in each of those areas, what solutions might be available to us if we step outside or step beyond what we have known or done before, what new opportunities might there be if we engage with 
different stakeholders or consider the context in a different way or engage with principles um, that we haven't perhaps considered before. And along the bottom here, you can see the core values that kept coming up and being presented by the researchers in these conversations. Uh, they were really um, consistent over time uh, with different researchers from different countries, with more experienced researchers as well as junior career researchers. There are some essential principles. And so putting them along the bottom here really is a reminder to infuse our thinking with these principles of doing no harm, um, of working from a perspective that is about enabling the flourishing of others, uh, that we need to connect first with the needs of people and place and planet that we need to be aware, but also to be brave and to act, uh, to follow up our concerns, but also to be safe. And that safety is about ourselves, but it's also about our research team. It's about the communities that we're working with. Um, sometimes there are unintended consequences for unintended um, members of communities. We need to really keep that value at heart when we're making decisions about how to proceed, who will be impacted in what way, who will be put in harm's way, um, how, how do we mitigate that? I think investing in our own learning is critical. It's really key to keep updating our skills and our knowledge and to make sure that we keep learning and um, engaging with the possibility that there is more that we don't yet know. Context and compassion, again, has been a really key value that has come up time and time again. And then a commitment. Solving ethical dilemmas often does not come easy. Uh, one of our participants talked about taking the long road. Sometimes we just have to show determination and commitment. If it doesn't work the first time, if we don't get it right the first time, we ought not give up. We have to come back and rethink as Action was talking about earlier, come back to the research journey, use those four Ps again and see what we've missed and what opportunities there might be. I'm going to hand over now to uh, Chris Guerra, uh, who is coming to us from Chile uh, this morning, this evening, Chris. Maybe more. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And we are going to present a brief case analysis to, to do an example of the use of the toolkit. And please imagine you are working in a refugee camp and your colleague uh, wants to do a clinical trial to test a COVID vaccine, okay? In, of course, in the refugee camp. But the, the ethical issue is you are not sure if the refugees can give a proper consent, given first, a lower level of literacy, second, linguistic barriers, and third, high expectations, okay? And the issue, of course, is detected at the beginning of the research journey, but you have to reflect on it during the, all the steps of the research journey. And to understand the dilemma, uh, we can use the 4P model in which in the specific place you are doing the research in this refugee camp, um, you need to consider that a successful vaccine would be really, really helpful in the refugee camp, given the uh, condition the people uh, are living there. And about the people, you have also to consider in this specific place, the people, the refugee in this case, are really anxious to receive help, to receive support, and they have high expectations, but they are not understanding, understanding the risks Okay, it's an important thing to consider. About the principles, maybe you can think it in terms of risk versus benefits. And also it's important to consider the uh, proper process of informed consent. And finally, at the precedence level, um, you have to know uh, there is some evidence that high expectations over expectations affect the decision in the consent process. Um, the next please, Corinne, thanks. Uh, and about the ethical reflection, you can use the same four piece to reflect. For example, the place. You have to consider in the camp, there are a hierarchical structure, there are leaders. 
leaders validated by the other people, by the community. People within the, the, that leaders, there are some people with knowledge about medicine. And also they are willing to help you uh, as a mediators between the research team and the community. Uh, in the principles levels, you think uh, you will not do the research until participants understand the risks and benefit. This is a principle you need to respect. Um, and also the precedents, um, you do some research, you do some research, and you know there are previous research who faced the same, the same uh, challenge. You can use that precedent as a model, okay, to find a solution. Considering all of this analysis, you can um, uh, propose a solution, the ethical response. And please, Corinne, the next one. Thank you very much. Considering, considering all of this, you decide with your research team to meet the community leaders and to work with them uh, as, a, as a part of a collaboration. And with the community leaders, leaders' help, you decide to organize workshops to explain the community, the, the research, the benefits, and also the risks. You can also do um, uh, individual interviews with potential participants in local language to explain the, the risk. And finally, you decide to do a revision of the process of consent during all the research journey to be sure the people are uh, really uh, agree in agreement with the participation. So that, that's an example. It's not useful in all the research, but probably it would be a good solution in this case. Thanks, Corinne. 